Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to be looking at how you can turn a Raspberry Pi Zero into a computer on a USB stick, something you'll be able to just plug into your PC, log into, and use just like as if it were a separate computer. There are several compute sticks already out there that you can buy, though they're pretty pricey for what they are, so here I'm going to show you how you can make something real similar for 5% of the price. So let's get to it right after this. Malduino is an open source, Arduino based bad USB. You can use it to inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper, anything you can do with a keyboard and 15 minutes of your time, Malduino can do in a matter of seconds. To find out more, see the Indiegogo link in the description. So the idea and files for this project come from Node. He does some really cool stuff, so I'll have his channel linked below, I highly recommend it. So this is the resulting product. The Pi is screwed in on the top, and the slide-out USB port allows you to connect it to your PC, where you can SSH into it as if it were an Ethernet to USB device, or have a VNC server running on it so you can control it via a regular desktop interface. If you have a Pi Zero W, you could just plug it into any power source and have it connect to your wireless network. Taking off the Pi reveals the USB slider mechanism and four pogo pins. These make contact with the gold pads on the bottom of the Pi, positive, negative, data plus, and data minus. Not only does this allow you to power the Pi, but also tap into the USB port here, hence allowing you to SSH into it. Although, since you're using the USB port for data, you can't use it for anything else. However, when you want to use your Pi Zero for something else, just unscrew it and you're done. The Pi Zero itself is left unsoldered. Both the Pi Zero and the Pi Zero W both have the same pad placement on the bottom, so you can hot swap them out, no problem. In order to make this, you will need a Pi Zero, some pogo pins, wire, a USB breakout board, M2.5 nuts, screws, oh, and a 3D printer to print the case. My pogo pins were slightly too long and thick, so I had to make the case slightly thicker and the holes for the pogo pins wider. Node's GitHub for the files is linked below. First step was to strip the wires and solder them to the pogo pins. Pretty easy, however I'd really highly suggest if you're going to do this yourself, use smaller gauge wire, as stripping wire like this is uh, it's, it's a nightmare. I positioned the wires with some blue tack and then just went over it with some hot glue. I found that using hot glue straight off would just uh, leave the wires kind of bent and then you wouldn't be able to move them around afterwards once the glue had set, so I found this was the best way. So it's really quite important that you solder the correct pogo pin to the correct uh, pads on the breakout board here. So if we look at the bottom of a Pi Zero, I'll show you what stuff is. So PP1 is your 5 volts, PP6 is ground, PP22 I believe is USB data plus, and PP23 is minus. So um, it should be labelled on your breakout board so you'll know what to connect to where. Right, so once you've got this all glued in and wired up, there is some assembly to do. So if you've printed all the STL files down in the description, you have four thingies. Uh, you need to take the one that looks like this. Uh, sorry about the different color. Long story. Uh, just slip this kind of bar thing into the hole, like so, and then put that under the um, breakout board. Sorry, I don't have better descriptions for these. And it should resemble a sliding mechanism. It's a good idea to put some hot glue on the top here to stop the breakout board from coming out as that could make things not work. Uh, then there's this top kind of cover and that just prevents everything from falling out. Just kind of put that on top, try not to disturb the pogo pins. And that's almost done. Next, you just need your Pi Zero and that'll go on top like this with the camera connector facing towards the USB port and then just screw that in with some, well, screws and nuts. M2.5 or M2 seems to be the correct size. And that's pretty much it in terms of hardware. And next there's just the software SSHing into it and creating a VNC server. Okay, so I'll run through this part pretty quickly as I have covered it in a previous video. You need to flash the Raspberry image onto a micro SD card and then open up the boot partition. And then you're gonna to want to open the command line um, text document in Notepad++ and then between root weight and quiet you want to add this bit of code here. Um, I'll put this in the description but just make sure the formatting is correct with one space on either side of that. I'll put that in the description and then you want to open config.txt uh, and then right at the bottom you want to add this line of code, it won't already be there and I'll of course put this bit in the description, just make sure um, that you haven't ad added anything else apart from just that. 
And then finally, you're going to want to open a blank Notepad++ file and just straight away without putting anything into it, just go to um, save as, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, save it into the boot partition as, let's see, I'll make this smaller if I can. It's not letting me, whatever. Save it as SSH and as all types. So just press save. And that'll just create an, a, f a file called SSH with no extension, nothing in it, just an empty file called SSH. And that'll enable SSH on boot as by default it is not enabled. And then once you've done that, you can close it up, unplug your micro SD card and put it in your Pi. And then you can just plug it in. It might take a couple of minutes to set itself up because it's its first boot, though just let it do its thing and then we'll hop over to the computer. Then just open up your favorite SSH client, connect to raspberrypi.local on port 22, give it a few seconds, and then a warning should come up, uh, warning you of impending doom. Uh, yep, there you go. Click yes to simply accept your fate. And then after a few seconds, you should be in. The uh, username is pi and the password is raspberry default. Um, I do suggest you change those, that default password, of course. And there you go. So I'll leave a link in the description to a video where I've done this kind of thing before and I'll show you how to share your internet connection with the Pi Zero. Uh, so if you do need an internet connection to do whatever it is you want to do, uh, do see the description. Now to use the Pi with a desktop-like interface, you need to install a VNC server. It already comes uh, with Raspbian, though you need to check it's up to date. So it's good to do sudo apt get update first. I didn't do that in this video, though you should do that really. And then secondly, run this command I've done here. And after that's all run, it, after it's run its course, um, you should be good. Next, type in sudo raspi config, and then you'll come to this. Uh, you need to go into uh, interfacing options, and then go to VNC and simply enable it. Then with your favorite VNC viewer, I'm using VNC viewer, uh, just connect to raspberrypi.local and uh, just let it do that. And then, of course, the username and password will be exactly the same as before with username pi and password raspberry. And there you go. You've got your desktop-like interface. I'm sure you can do a few things to up the quality, but in essence, there you go. Speaking of Raspberry Pis, I often do giveaways on Twitter and Instagram, which I sometimes don't even announce on YouTube. So you should probably follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Other than that, remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to chat, I also have a Discord server which will be linked down below. So yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more hacking videos.